In the past week, thousands of earthquakes have struck a small, quiet region of Central Europe, not along a famous plate boundary, not near an active volcano, but beneath the rolling hills of the Czech Republic, in a place most people have never associated with seismic danger. To the public, the sudden surge of earthquakes feels alarming. Homes rattling, subtle shaking repeating day after day, headlines hinting at magma and volcanic forces beneath Europe. But to geologists, this region tells a very different story, one that has been unfolding slowly for centuries. What's happening beneath the Czech Republic right now is not the beginning of a volcanic eruption. It's something stranger, quieter, and far more revealing about how the Earth really works. The earthquakes are clustered in a region known as Vogtland, near the town of Luby, close to the border with Germany. Since late November, more than 5,000 small earthquakes have occurred here, most of them so weak they can only be detected by sensitive instruments. Only a handful were strong enough to be felt at the surface, and even the largest barely reached magnitude 3. Despite the numbers, there has been no damage, no collapsed buildings, no surface rupture, and no sign of magma rising toward the surface. Instead, the source of the swarm lies much deeper and much older. Beneath Falkland sits an ancient magma intrusion, a body of molten rock that forced its way into the crust roughly 250,000 years ago during the region's last known volcanic activity. That magma never erupted. It stalled deep underground, slowly cooling over hundreds of thousands of years. At depths of more than 12 kilometers, cooling is an incredibly slow process. Even today, that intrusion remains warmer than the surrounding rock. Not molten, not mobile, but still influential. And that influence is key to what's happening now. The earthquakes are not being driven by magma movement. They're being driven by gas. Deep below the crust, carbon dioxide is released from partially molten rock in the upper mantle. This gas rises slowly upward, searching for pathways through fractures and weaknesses in the crust. On its own, that gas doesn't cause earthquakes. But when it encounters an old magma intrusion sitting within a fault zone, everything changes. The intrusion acts like a rigid obstacle. Gas pressure builds around it. Fluids seep into cracks. Friction along small faults is reduced. And suddenly, instead of one large earthquake, the crust responds with hundreds or thousands of tiny ones. This is what scientists call an earthquake swarm. Unlike typical earthquakes, swarms don't follow a clear pattern of foreshocks, a main shock, and aftershocks. Instead, activity waxes and wanes. It migrates. It pulses. One cluster fades while another appears nearby. That's exactly what has been observed here. The current swarm unfolded in two main phases. The first cluster appeared east of Luby in late November concentrated in a small area less than half a square kilometer wide. After several days, activity eased, only to reappear a few kilometers away in early December, this time with even more earthquakes, though still extremely small. More than 99% of these quakes have been micro-earthquakes, far below the threshold of damage or danger. Even residents living directly above the swarm may not have felt anything at all. And this is where context matters. Earthquake swarms were first scientifically described in this very region in the 19th century. Faultland has produced documented swarms for more than 200 years. In just the last few decades alone, similar sequences occurred in 2000, 2008, 2011, 2013, 2014, 2017, 2018, and now again. Some swarms lasted weeks, others persisted for months. A few involved more than 10,000 earthquakes. Most never produced anything larger than magnitude 4. The strongest swarm on record, in 1985, produced a magnitude 5.1 earthquake. Rare, but still far from catastrophic. This history tells scientists something important. The current activity, while intense in number, fits squarely within known behavior for this region. It is not unprecedented, and it is not escalating toward eruption. Geologically, Vogtland sits within the Eger Graben, part of the European Cenozoic Rift System. This rift represents a zone of weakness in the crust where stretching occurred millions of years ago. That stretching allowed magma to rise closer to the surface than in surrounding regions, leaving behind intrusions and partially molten zones deep underground. Today, those remnants continue to influence how fluids and gases move through the crust. The earthquakes are shallow, but not volcanic. They release pressure slowly rather than violently, and crucially, they show no sign of magma ascent. 
Despite how dramatic magma-related earthquakes may sound, scientists are confident these swarms have virtually zero chance of triggering an eruption. What makes regions like Vogtland especially valuable is not the danger they pose, but the insight they provide. Here, scientists can study earthquake swarms in extraordinary detail. Dense seismic networks detect even the faintest tremors. Gas sensors track subtle changes in carbon dioxide emissions. Satellite radar measures ground movement down to millimeters, revealing deformation invisible to the human eye. Together, these tools allow researchers to observe a living geological system responding to pressure, fluids, and ancient structures buried far below the surface. This matters far beyond Central Europe. Similar swarm behavior occurs beneath places like Italy's Campi Flegre, Iceland's volcanic rift zones, and parts of the western United States. In those regions, distinguishing harmless swarms from genuine warning signs can mean the difference between calm monitoring and emergency action. Vautlin acts as a natural laboratory, a place where scientists can test models, refine interpretations, and learn how the crust behaves when fluids, not magma, drive seismicity. There is also a broader lesson here. Not every increase in earthquakes signals impending disaster. In swarm-prone regions, frequent small quakes may actually reduce the likelihood of a larger one by releasing stress gradually. The earth adjusts in increments instead of snapping all at once. That doesn't mean uncertainty disappears. Earthquake swarms remain one of the most complex phenomena in seismology. Scientists cannot predict exactly when a swarm will begin, how long it will last, or how strong its largest event might be. What they can say is that the current swarm follows patterns observed repeatedly over centuries. Eventually, activity will fade, gas pathways will shift, pressures will equalize, and the crust will return to its background hum of near silence. Months or years from now, another swarm may begin, different in detail, familiar in character. What's happening beneath the Czech Republic right now is not a warning of eruption or collapse. It's a reminder that the Earth is never truly still. Even far from plate boundaries and famous volcanoes, ancient structures continue to shape how energy moves through the crust. Most of the time, we only notice the planet when it breaks violently. But events like this reveal another side of geology. Slow, subtle, patient. A world where change happens not in explosions, but in whispers too small for us to feel, yet powerful enough to reshape the ground over geological time. And as long as scientists continue to listen to those whispers, regions like Vokland will keep teaching us how the Earth really works. What makes earthquake swarms like this so valuable is not just what they tell us about the present, but what they reveal about the future of seismic science. For decades, earthquakes were treated as sudden, isolated failures, stress builds, a fault snaps, damage follows. But swarms challenge that simple narrative. They show that the Earth can release energy slowly, unevenly, and sometimes intelligently, adjusting itself through thousands of tiny movements instead of one catastrophic break. In regions like Falkland, scientists are beginning to see how fluids act as hidden regulators of seismic behavior. Carbon dioxide, water, and other deep gases don't just rise passively. They interact with ancient structures, change friction along faults, and decide whether energy leaks out quietly or stays locked in place. That insight has implications far beyond Central Europe. Similar fluid-driven processes are suspected beneath parts of Italy, Japan, Iceland, and the Western United States. In some cases, understanding whether a swarm is gas-driven or stress-driven can help scientists rule out escalation early, preventing unnecessary panic. In others, it may help identify when a swarm is behaving unusually and deserves closer attention. This is why dense monitoring matters. Across Europe, seismic networks are becoming more sensitive, capable of detecting earthquakes smaller than magnitude 1. Satellite systems track surface deformation so slight it would take years to notice without instruments. Gas sensors can now identify subtle changes in emissions long before anything reaches the surface. Together, these tools are transforming how we interpret seismic unrest not as a binary threat or safety signal, but as a spectrum of behavior that must be read carefully, patiently, and in context. The Czech swarm is a reminder of that discipline. Thousands of earthquakes can happen without disaster. Magma can exist without eruption. Pressure can move without catastrophe. The Earth does not always announce its intentions loudly. Sometimes the most important signals are the ones that unfold slowly, quietly, and repeatedly over generations. Fotland has been whispering for centuries, 
and each time it does, scientists listen a little more closely, refine their models a little further, and improve our ability to understand what the ground beneath us is really saying. Because the goal of seismology isn't fear, it's clarity. Not every tremor is a warning, not every swarm is a crisis, but every sequence is data, and over time, that data helps us separate true danger from natural background motion in a restless planet. The Earth will keep moving, faults will keep adjusting, gases will keep rising through ancient scars in the crust. And places like this quiet corner of Central Europe will continue to remind us that geology isn't just about disasters. It's about systems that evolve slowly, patiently, and mostly out of sight. If you want to understand the planet, you don't always look where it's loudest. Sometimes you look where it never stops whispering.